Welcome back. Today we're going to wrap up the transmission system. Um, on the x-axis we're going to do uh, belt and pulleys and on the y-axis we're going to do gear rack and pinion. So let's go! For the y-axis gear rack I found this Delrin product that is made specifically to slide right into the groove of this 20 series extrusion and um, you can just butt up as many pieces as you need to extend the length and uh, I thought it was really interesting. I don't know what kind of longevity it'll have. It was fairly cheap, so I thought it would be worth a try. And then if it just seems like it's not gonna handle the task, I can always upgrade to, uh, you know, metal gear rack. So yeah, let's try it. So to install it, we just um, slide it down the channel. And then I believe we just put a, a T-nut and screw at the end to lock it into place so it can't slide. So I have four of these to span the 2,000 millimeter length. All right, we're at the end. So it looks like I need to cut it off flush there. And then I'll probably just make an end plate here uh, to make this look cleaner and then it'll hold it in place also. Here's what it looks like up underneath where it's in the channel. And you can see my motor is gonna be mounted right there uh, with the spur gear. Um, yeah, anyways, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it works. Let's get these last four parts from PCB Way opened up here to see if there's any holes that we're gonna need to tap. PCB Way has offered to sponsor a number of the custom milled aluminum parts for the project. You may know of PCB Way as a one stop solution for PCB manufacturing, but they also offer a wide range of other manufacturing services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. This is a really great service for when you need parts but don't have the manufacturing capabilities in-house or even just want to save time. For this tube cutting machine project, I ordered 24 unique parts, some of them having multiple quantities. I had the CNC machines to produce them, but ordering them through PCB Way has saved me a considerable amount of time. Ordering was easy. I just exported the set files from Fusion 360 and then drag and drop the files on their website, select the quantity and material, they also offer a number of different finishing options for machine parts, but this time I chose to go with raw aluminum, that way they would match the parts that I machined in-house. It took 21 days to receive the parts from the date of ordering, and they look great. Uh, the finish is much better than I can achieve with my CNC machines. As I mentioned in the last video, stick around to the last video in the series and I'll have all my custom machine parts um, shared on PCB Waste website, so if anybody wants to try to replicate these machines, um, they'll all be there where you can order them. So thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this project. All right, cool. Let's get the holes tapped. Okay, these belt clamps get M3. All right, those two are done. For this belt tensioner, I need one M4 in the top here for my shoulder bolt. All right, now it needs some M5s in the side. All right, this piece is ready to go. Let's see if we can get this motor mount attached to the X axis. I think we can go ahead and install the idler pulley. I've got four bearings in here, and you can see I've modified my design to actually use a shoulder bolt this time. So, it's gonna go in here, and I need to get some washers on here. Oh, actually I forgot, I need to use bigger washers so that to contain the bearings so they don't slip out. Let's redo this. Okay, I've got some bigger washers here. Let's try this again. Okay, nice. All right, let's get this installed on the machine. Okay, I've got my screws on here. Let's see if we can get this installed.
All right, that looks good. I'm gonna leave it loose for now until we get the belt on here and then we can tension it all up. I've got a couple five to one reducers, uh, one for the X axis and one for the Y axis. I've got uh, my spur gear for the Y axis and my pulley for the X axis and some belt. Let's go ahead and get all this hooked up. Okay, that one's ready to install. All right, let's head over to the machine. Here we are at the rear chuck. Got my five to one reducer with the spur gear. Um, I've not designed any kind of spring mechanism for backlash. Um, I just wanted to keep it simple to start out. There were so many other complex parts of this project that um, I thought I'll just test it out and see how much of an issue it is. Um, if it turns out to be a big problem, then I will tackle it then. But for now, we're just gonna try this. So I have this plate here that uh, my screws are just gonna thread into. Okay, that's loosely in there. Now I can just slide it up to put pressure on the gear rack. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, so it looks like I need to finish up this back plate here um, to finish up this rear chuck and the y-axis motion. Let's get this installed on the x-axis. I want it like this so I can access the holes to tighten it onto the motor shaft. All right, cool. Let's see if we can get the belt installed. Oh no, order of operations got me again. Uh, I just remembered that I can't put on the belt clamps uh, with the Z-axis on here, because um, I need access uh, for the head of the screws to sink into this plate. So I guess this is gonna come back off for a minute while we get the belt installed. I've got the belt installed with the belt clamp on this one side of the X-axis. So let's see if we can uh, route it around through the pulleys and then get it cut to length and attached on the other side. I've got my belt clamp and the riser. If I remember right, this was kind of a pain to do. Let's see if we can get it in here. Okay, nice. Let's put some tension on it. Might end up having to use longer screws. I think my belt might be a little bit looser this time. Yeah, I've bottomed out already. All right, let me find some longer screws for these. I found some screws that are five millimeters longer. Let me just kind of snug them up here. I think that feels pretty good. Let's get the uh, Z-axis reinstalled again. All right, I've got the Z-axis reinstalled. Our belt's on. Let's go ahead and get this uh, coupler on here. All right. Well, I think our transmission system is pretty much done. I just have a couple stragglers left to tackle. Um, like back here on the rear chuck, I still need to um, 
machine a spot here to uh, attach the sensor for homing. And then I still need to make this end plate here to secure the gear rack and probably have a mount also for the for like a homing switch or something. But uh, yeah, wow, um, this is coming together much faster than my last project. Uh, probably because I've done most of this before. So anyways, awesome. I get my end plate designed in Fusion. So let's get this machined out of aluminum. Okay, I've got this end plate machined. Uh, I just need to tap a couple M4 holes here to mount a homing switch leader. Let's see if we can get this end plate installed. Got a couple drop-in T-nuts for this bottom rail. And I've cut this uh, gear rack to length. And I left it slightly long because it seems like it kind of squishes up in there slightly. So it'll have some pressure on it. We'll see how that works. Okay, let's try that. That wraps it up for today. I think next time we'll get the motors installed on the machine. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this project and thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making these projects possible. Thank you guys.